What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we are jumping on the E46 and we're going to do some coilovers. So like I've said in the past, this is going to be a budget build. So I've got the max speeding rods coilovers for this. It was like $385 shipped and I think it took three days to get to me. I, like, I couldn't believe how quickly they shipped them out. Three days and it was over the Christmas period. I think I bought them on Boxing Day in their Boxing Day sales. So yeah, ridiculously quick. Now, we're gonna jump in, the car's already in the air, we're gonna start with the rears because my front suspension is destroyed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chuck the rears in, get that height set, and then try and match it on the front. What I'd like to do is have the, uh, the sill of the car, same height front and back. So I'm not sure if on these the wheel arch is a little lower in the back or if it's perfectly parallel with the fronts, but I want the side of the car um, to be exactly the same front and rear if I can do that. Uh, practically but I do want to slam it and I've noticed all of the install videos on these on the E46s um, don't really go into a lot of detail on how to set up the rear suspension so we're gonna go into that today I've also noticed people can't seem to slam it in the back um, they seem to be quite limited on how low they're gonna go and I'm gonna show you a few ways to get around that so without further ado let's jump on in All right, so obviously first step is gonna be taking the back wheels off. I'm gonna do both the rears at the same time, uh, just because then it's pretty much all done. I can just slam it on the ground after I'm finished. Now, before I start, I want you guys to write in the comments, how long do you think it's gonna take me to do a full coilover kit on this car? I've never done a coilover kit on an E46, and I've never done a divorced spring setup, which is what you've got on the back, which means uh, the spring is separate to the actual uh, shock. So. Yeah, write in the comments how long do you reckon it's gonna take me? I'll, give me a sec. It's exactly 3.30 my time right now. So, I reckon an hour and a half. So I reckon I'll be done by five o'clock. But, let me know in the comments what do you guys think. And if you haven't done it yet, please like, please subscribe, it helps the channel out heaps. Let's jump in. I'm gonna to have to come down here, undo the bolt that goes in there, undo that and then let it all down. So that's gonna drop this whole assembly down. Okay, now next step is I'm gonna to have to push all this assembly down and pull that spring out. That's the old factory spring, as you can tell. Now, before I do any of that, I'm gonna go and put some jack stands under here because I am gonna need the jack and also to be safer, you want your jack stands under there. So let's get those under and then let's get all of this ripped out. Okay, so they are out. Uh, literally just used a crowbar, jammed it under there and pried it out. A little bit sketchy, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, the only way to get it out, really. I can't, unless you're gonna dismantle everything. <laughs> not doing that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Here's what was in there. So you can see that little hole, the little like raised section there, right? That goes over that into the stock spring and the stock spring sits up the top, right? So let's just take a step back and go, if I was just using lowered springs, all I'd be doing is taking this spring out, putting a shorter spring in the exact same position and off we go, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Now, with the actual coilover, the way that they say to put it in is like this, all of this goes on there, there's a bolt that goes in the bottom, holds it in, and the new spring sits on that. Now, this is the lowest setting you can go. Obviously, you can go higher than that, but everyone that I have seen install these coilovers, puts it like that, and then they're about 20 to 25 mil too high. They don't like how high they're sitting, right? So, I'm not recommending this, but what I'm going to do is get the new spring, put it straight on the rubber, and install it back in. Now, keep in mind, even if I were to jump this car, the shock that I'm putting in, no one really understands how to set it up, but the way it works is, you put your spring in at whatever height you wanna set, then you've gotta set preload, which is what you do with the shock. So you're gonna jack this section up until the spring stops moving, and then you're gonna go another five mil up to put five mil of preload on your spring like you would with a normal coilover setup. Once you're at that height, you will spin the new one up, and I'll show you in a minute when I take this out and put the new one in. You spin that up so that this lines up with that, okay? Now, 
That's how I'm gonna do it. I don't recommend people doing that, but this is YouTube and you guys get to see the absolute lowest point you can get these coilovers to sit on an E46. So, that's how I'm gonna do it. Now, the other section we have to do before I do that is go into the boot and take out those two nuts right there. So let's go into the boot and I'll show you what we're gonna do in there. All right, now, those sections are back here behind that. So we're gonna have to pull out a couple of pins, pull this whole section out and obviously the other side whole section out. And then I will show you what it looks like behind there. And then we go, so as you can see, someone's been here before and they've removed all that heat shielding or whatever that is, that like a rubber. So you gotta undo that bolt there and the one on the other side and then that shock will just drop to the floor. So I'm gonna do that obviously off camera because I'm using both my hands just to hold this still uh, and that'll drop out. And obviously we've gotta do the other side as well. Okay, now the first issue that I find people have with the shock is it comes in a box like spun all the way up to here, right? Really, really short and everyone's like, oh, it's so short. I had to like jack up the brake uh, assembly so high just to be able to get the bolt through here. Uh, guys, it spins out. That's just for shipping. They're not gonna send you the world's biggest box when they can shorten this. So you need to lengthen this to be able to make it work a bit better. Now, I've got the spring in there and it actually isn't moving already. So pretty much all I need to do is raise the brake assembly and then line this up. So the other thing I would recommend doing is getting reinforcement plates that actually sit on top of this, on the inside. So you will bolt this up underneath and then go inside, put this on top, and then put your nuts on top of that. Uh, apparently the struts are renowned for cracking and stuff, so you wanna do that. And then we've actually got something else for in the front as well. Now, I am putting these on for now, because they were like $12, they were cheap as, but I have got a rear uh, strut bar, the tower strut bar coming in, and it actually is uh, the reinforcement plates as well as a strut bar. So that'll be going in its place. So for now, I need to put this in, put this on top, bolt up the top piece, and then extend the bottom down to make it work. Okay, so to give you a little insight, that's where it goes up there. Now, what I've done is I've just put the jack under here just to hold it in place. And as you can see, I've spun it right down. I haven't jacked up the, the bottom. I can probably spin it down a bit more, and then I'm gonna jack that up. So it's gonna probably be more than five to 10 mil, uh, of preload, but I'm gonna put the minimum amount of preload I possibly can and then get it to work. You can imagine if you had all the locking collars underneath as well, that's another 25 mil or more that that um, hole there is gonna go down. So, yes, there's a lot of preload that's put on these. Now, even with taking all that housing out of the bottom and running it literally as low as possible, the preload you're setting, now I'm going five to 10 mil of preload because that's the general rule of thumb, but that has only been turned on four turns and by that I mean the bottom housing onto the thread and look how much you need to turn that up. Now, four threads is not enough guys. I am not going to run four threads onto my suspension. I know the general rule is you want to go onto the thread as deep as the th um, thread is wide, as the, you know, for example, that is a 50 mil wide thread um, or shaft. That's what she said. <laughs> so you want to go on at least 50 mil. So that is what I have done to this one. So I'm going to take the measurement of this, transfer that across to the measurement on that one, lock it in and then just jack that up to compress the spring and I'll show you what that looks like. And there we go. So that is literally the least amount of preload you can possibly run on this setup. So the spring is, as you can see, that compressed. It's not crazy, which is good because if it's over compressed, it just rides like rubbish. When the Supra is aired up, um, obviously that's another 50 mil of preload on the springs and it I could not drive like that. It's it's purely just to get over, you know, bumps and all that sort of thing. So now I'm gonna go over and do the other side and uh, turns out I'm not gonna get this done by five o'clock. So <laughs> it's almost five o'clock and I've only done the rears. So I'm gonna go do the other side, chuck the wheels on and we're gonna be tucking boys. Oh, we are gonna be tucking, oh my God. Okay, so to give you guys some context uh, on how much you're gonna have to preload your spring, it's gonna be around 100 mil just shy of 100 mil of preload because obviously that's completely relaxed. 
we have to jack that up to that point because that's the longest this will be. There we go, it's in. That is the passenger side all done. Bolts it up, nice and tight. I'm just gonna go over and do a nut and bolt check. Obviously just the two at the top and the one down there. Um, let's see how low it is. This may be too low, I don't know, but we sent it, so let's see how we go. Okay, so that's as low as you can get it. I do not recommend running it like this, uh, purely because it's against, um, I guess the manufacturer's setup. They want you to have the little um, housing underneath, but you can imagine having the housing and the two rings is gonna be added height to that. That's pretty much exactly what I wanted. Uh, I love the look of tucking just a bit of tire and the other YouTube videos I've seen of people installing these coilovers, when they try and uh, show you the ride quality, it is stiff as, like all you've got is the bounce of the tire. So the way I've done it, watch this. You've still got some rebound, so it's gonna be a comfortable ride. Now, you do also have damper adjustment in the rear and in the front on the top of the um, strut. Now, I have turned them to halfway, which is what I always do. Supra's on halfway, this is on halfway now, so you've got 32 points of damper. Um, and yeah, I run it at the middle, so you kind of, you can judge it. If you're driving along, you're like, ah, oh, it feels a bit like soft. You can always turn it up a bit more, make it a bit stiffer, or if it's a bit too stiff, you can turn it down. So yeah, that's the rears, how I wanted to install it. Um, looks fine to me. You saw the amount of preload on that spring, so, I mean, the spring's not coming out. Um, I put 100 mil of preload on that spring. So the spring was static when I put it in and then we squashed it 100 mil. So even if I jumped this car and the wheels dropped all the way droop, like the, the most droop they could go, it's still got 100 mil of preload on the spring. So it's not gonna like just slide out or fall out. So I think it's perfectly safe. Now, let's jump on the front because they're a little bit more involved and obviously I've still got to like set heights on the front. The rears would just chuck it in and off you go. But the fronts I do have to set heights, so that would take a little bit more time. Those of you that commented that it was gonna take me longer than five o'clock, you are correct. It's already 5.30 <laughs> and I haven't even started the front. So let's jump into the front. I reckon if I'm lucky, I'll be done by 7.30. But I'm in Melbourne, we got daylight savings, so it's gonna be light until like 8.30, so we're good. So let's jump on in before we run out of uh, daylight. All right, so this one's a little different from like your generic, say, Supra or whatever it may be. Now, what we're gonna have to do is undo this bad boy here to undo that. Obviously, the three at the top, but not yet. We also have to undo that bolt there because that clamps around the base of this. So that's how it kind of works. It clamps that and that's what holds onto it. So we're gonna have to undo that, drop this off. Now, what I'm going to do quickly before I do anything is measure the distance between the underside of that and this arm because on the coilover where you bolt the top of that to is adjustable. So I want to make sure that that distance, that little gap there is gonna be the same when I put the coilover in. Okay, something I wanna show you guys here. Obviously you've got four bolts there because it's got camber adjustment. Now, um, I have seen on a previous video, someone ground out these further to be able to fit it because in the original position, where you can see there, there's a bit of a scratch, uh, the front ones don't fit. Now, there are four holes. So you can actually move this one back a smidge and same with this one. So what I've done is I've moved these ones from here to here so we're still dead center on the original point and you don't have to drill holes in your, uh, sorry, um, grind the holes here because the way I see that is if you grind holes here, move the whole thing back a bit, it, you've got positive camber permanently set up. You've already got a bit of movement here because these are slotted. Um, so I've pulled it all the way this way, uh, all the way to the outside, just so that I've got some uh, uniformity. And then I've, I don't know if you can see it, it probably won't, focus but the actual center point has like a, a circle around it so you've got the line line it up with those and then that's perfectly set and the, you saw the reinforcement plate the black plate that goes under here apparently this is quite weak on e46s so that reinforcement plate helps that a lot 
So yeah, just for your information, don't go and drill your holes out wider. You can move these points. Okay, um, I think I fluked it. So check this out. All right, now, the back is way lower than the front, kinda. So, so from top of the rim edge to the guard is 35 millimeters. Top of the rim edge to the guard is 65 millimeters. Now, wait before you judge, because I was judging pretty hard too. The back has settled a lot more than the front. So when I first put the back on the ground, um, it wasn't tucking that much tire. It was actually just over the tire. So it's probably dropped like 20 mil. So that means the front's gonna drop probably 20 mil, maybe 15 mil. Now, my dilemma is, remember at the beginning of the video when I said I want this sill to be even to the ground? It's not. So the back, even though it's tucking that much, that gap is 138 mil. The front at the moment, before this settles, is 110 mil. So the front sill is actually 28 mil lower than the rear. All right, so after a drive, this is how it's sitting. So it's tucking pretty hard back. Front's still got a bit of clearance, but like I said, I wanna leave it overnight and uh, see how it goes. Now, there is an issue, obviously the girth of the coilover is slightly bigger than the girth of the stock suspension. So the inside of my rim is just rubbing. So I'm just gonna buy some five mil spaces, chuck them on the front and that should fix that problem. But apart from that, I'm not rubbing anywhere, which is a huge spin out. Um, if this doesn't settle more, I am gonna drop the front a little bit more, probably five, 10 mil. Maybe five mil sits, but I'll see where it sits tomorrow and then go from there. Right, so last night I left you with the right height, right height as it was. Didn't get to do a huge drive because obviously the wheel was just touching on the coilover ever so slightly because these wheels are super fat. Um, I went this morning and got some eight mil spacers, chucked them in and that has fixed the problem. So now I've got probably about six mil gap in between the inside of the um, rim and the coilover, which is good. Six, seven mil, something like that. Um, I have put the factory wheel bolts back in, but I'm only being held on by two threads. So I ordered today some extended uh, bolts because you do not want to run that, guys. I'm not going to drive this car um, until I get those because that's really unsafe. You want to be minimum, um, what's the rule of thumb? So what do they say? Minimum in as far as the bolt is wide. So if your bolt is 10 mil wide, you want to be in 10 mil um, into the thread. Uh, and I'm not, so yeah, so these are 12s and I'm not in 12 mil. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do is leave it here. Um, we can keep playing with it, we can keep doing other videos and so on with it, but it's gonna sit right here until those are on the car. Then I can take it for a nice long drive, get the fronts to settle a little bit more. Currently the fender to rim gap in the front is 60 mil and 30 mil in the rear. Uh, like I've told you guys earlier, the, um, the, the seals are lower to the ground in the front than the rear sitting like that. So I don't wanna go too crazy, but let's show you where we've ended up sitting for now. Okay, so that's our wheel gap in the front and then coming back, that's our wheel gap in the rear. So they have settled really well. Um, I'm hoping the front settled a little bit more. When I first put this on the ground, you can see the whole tire. So that's how much the rears have settled. So you can imagine these haven't had a lot of time to actually settle, so that could come down a little bit more, which would be nice, but I'm pretty happy with that. And also, the fitment looks really good as well. It's not over the top, but it is very, very drivable, which is nice. And at some point, this is gonna be getting a lot more power in it, so I want it to be drivable. So that's it for this video, guys. Um, I'm really happy how it's sitting. I may do some extra tuning of the suspension off camera, maybe drop the front a little bit if it doesn't settle as much, but. I am pretty happy how it sits. Like I said, with the seal nice and even, it's looking good. I hope that was enjoyable for you guys. I hope it was helpful. I hope it's given you a bit of an insight into the coilover setup. I do not recommend you running the rears the way I've run them because it's against manufacturer's specs or whatever. Uh, if you want to, that's your choice. I'm gonna run like that because I want it slammed. Uh, but it's up to you, your car. Uh, as usual guys, anything you need, anything that's been in the video, I'll try and have a link in the description for you guys. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.